All right, so I'd like to take a few minutes to discuss the quantification of the imaging data. And I would like to start by showing you this video about how our scene can be deceiving. So when we think about how to describe biology with numbers, everybody can look at their favorite paper and can pick a figure um, that they liked. Um, I'm presenting a, a, something that um, we looked at recently where we're looking at uh, cell counts. In this case, those are neutrophils and they are normalized to a cross section of a column. You can also think about cell frequencies such as neutrophils um, among all of the cells. During our um, training course, we looked at parameter uh, such as uh, gut thickness, and that is often associated with inflammation. We can look at the presence of plasma cells with object classifier, and that can signify chronic inflammation. From those densities of cells, you can get to some hotspot analysis. There is also a lot that can be addressed within the spatial relationships. For example, you look at the immune cells in the tumor versus immune cells next to the tumor. When we think about um, fibrosis, we will often express this as an area that's occupied by collagen, and that's going to be higher in the fibrotic conditions versus the normal conditions. When learning about pixel classifier, we looked at the areas um, that are occupied by panet or goblet cells. There was a couple of papers showing that tumor cellularity is associated with prognosis and also that nuclear size differs in certain tumors. These are all various ways that you can present information that's encoded in an image in numerical format that is easier to interpret as a scientist. And just to really get you thinking about this, we would like to present that in a slightly different form. Okay, so what measurements can we extract from whole site images? In uh, this picture on the left, it's a whole slide image of a human pancreas stained with insulin, HLA-2, and CD-163 for macrophages. And from this image, we can look at regions of interest, such as islets or tumors or uh, objects like that. And from these regions of interest, get areas in either micron squared or percentage of the whole tissue, or frequency, such as the number of islets per millimeter squared of tissue. We can also zoom in and see individual cells, and from there, get those cells uh, size and area or shape in circularity. Um, we can use a classifier to determine the cell phenotypes, um, such in this, in this case, such as insulin uh, positive, HLA2 positive. And we can uh, look at the frequency of any, any individual subset in terms of percent or uh, per area. And within each cell, we can also measure the intensity of specific markers, which is loosely related to the amount of protein in the cell, though this is a very noisy metric. In addition to looking at individual cells, we can look at the relationships between cells, such as the distance between um, a cell and the nearest uh, region of interest, in this case, an islet, um, or we can look at the co-occurrence of two uh, different markers um, in terms of the percent of all cells. So this is a word cloud generated by the various attendees at our workshop, and it just goes to show how many different things people are interested in quantifying in a single image. This can go from very simple quantifications where you have a single field of view and just want to count the cells in that field of view, or you can go all the way up to complex workflows as Sarah just described, where you can find first the area of the tissue and then within that tissue, some sub types of areas like tumors or islets, and then various um, different classifications of cells and distances and possibly neighborhood um, statistics. And just how much information you can pull out of your tissue and like what kind of fine details you can differentiate depends on the uh, quality of your tissue, the staining, whether or not you have artifacts, and the overall quality of the images, whether or not they're in focus, whether or not they're saturated, and things like that. So one of the questions that we often get asked is how many tissues, how many blocks, how many animals we need to image to achieve statistically significant result. Well, without knowing what is the expected magnitude of change in variability, um, we cannot really calculate statistical power. So one of the things that we recommend is to run a small preliminary study to establish those parameters and um, during that preliminary study, we can also identify some of the problems with uh, tissues, um, staining or imaging 
and we can improve them for the next round of a more complete study. That's very important also for reproducibility. Data sharing is increasingly urgent need. As a community, I think we all have to figure out a proper way to do it. When thinking about your first experiments, I just highlight those two papers that are excellent guides to designing a good fluorescence imaging experiment. Um, that also um, highlights the need for optimization of your uh, workflow and the fact that you're going to have to manage the data um, that you generate during that process. And there is this excellent paper from Pete Bankhead on the developing of image analysis method for digital pathology. There are some examples of analysis in practice, and um, I highly recommend that as a great introductory read um, whenever you need to develop your own pipeline.